More than enough, it's promises fleeting of water and wine. Emptied the cup, I found myself wanting. But there is a well that never runs dry. Thank you. 
the Lord Jesus.
on here is a cord fitting for Bernie's. It is super simple and really comforting, and I make it all the time for Nick and Bernie. I'm going to start by chopping up a shallot. Hot heating up oil. Toss in that shallot. You um, the so that you can soften the beef. Oh, that piece of ginger you have. I'm going to peel it. That's the flesh. It's both nice and hot. It's a gingery vibe. Okay, let's do it right. To make fried beef, you just need a little bit of red and a lot of stock. So. Testing, testing, testing. That's fine. 
Good morning and welcome to worship. I just invite you to open up your heart and listen to God through music, through announcements, and every part of this worship service so that God will be glorified. And we have time now for Dave to give us the announcement. Morning, everyone. Nice to see you. It's a beautiful morning, and uh, it's just a glorious day, and it's a great day to praise the Lord, and it's nice to have all of you here in church from all ages, and that's the beauty of having a church family. There are attendance pads, don't forget, you know, in the pews, and sometimes I know that those who are at the far end don't get a chance to, to get them signed, so maybe hand a pew pad or somehow help those people that aren't, don't have access to the pew pad, so we make sure we get their names down as well. And also, if you're watching on Zoom, don't forget, please put the number of people who are watching the service with you. And also, another reminder, if you do have a prayer request, please fill out a prayer card and pass it to the end of the pew, and the ushers will be sure to pick them up. And also, you can call the church office and um, also on message us on our Facebook page. And if you haven't checked out our Facebook page, you need to do that. It's really coming along nicely. Today, the beautiful flowers behind me on the altar are given by Patty Beagle in memory of her family. The UMC is delivering Meals on Wheels for this month of September coming up. There is a clipboard back of the narthex to sign up. We do need help, and there are dates that are highlighted, so please notice that. But we do need help on those dates that are not highlighted. Excuse me, I said that backwards. There is a yellow shopping cart in the narthex for the military care packages items. We will be collecting, well, the end will be coming soon until the end of August. Please contact Millie or the office who have any names and addresses of active duty personnel. Sunday school is coming up. The classes will begin September 11th at nine o'clock. So please families, um, talk with your kiddos and, and people of all ages actually. You know, we have some good fun Sunday school opportunities for everyone. So please take advantage of that. It, and like Gideon has said before, you know, coming to church is one thing, but when you're in a small group, there's just something added that really makes a difference in, in restoring and, and uh, helping us maintain our trust and faith in the Lord. Confirmation class, if you do have a child who is in eighth grade or older and would like to be confirmed, confirmation class will be held this fall. And you may again call the office for that to register. 
um, membership class. This is kind of neat, something Gideon's doing. If you would like to become a member or take a refresher course, a membership class will be held in the fall. Please call the office to register. Now, this is not just a class for anyone that just might want to come to our church or just for new members. It's for all of us. And I overheard, I forget who it was, that said, you know, I'd be interested in attending that class. And also, Marilee, I see you gave me an announcement here. And she indicated that rehearsals are for our Peals of Joy. The Handbell Choir begins this Wednesday, August 31st at 5 p.m. Practice for the Handbell Choir at 5 p.m. in the bell room. We're always glad to have new ringers join us. If you want to check it out, come watch and listen to rehearsal. We were all beginners when we first started. So that's a good starting point. You can be a beginner. And Marilee always says it's not that hard. I don't know when I sit there and look at that, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if I could do that. But she said, anybody can do it. It's a great way to serve your church, have fun, and make beautiful music enjoyed by all of us. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that was not good enough. <laughs> if the morning is really good, I think it should be louder than that. So let's take it again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You are warmly welcome to the presence of God here in the church and the presence of brothers and sisters. I would like you to actually turn around if you feel comfortable and just tell somebody you're welcome to church service. You can shake their hands, actually, if you like. Okay, these two can greet. You, you're just isolated. You know, okay, so that's good. All right. Um, we warmly welcome to this service, and I will really invite us to pay attention to what God has for us. God has something for us anytime we come together as people of God. Because he's ready for us. He's waiting for us. And this time, I believe he has something. So I would just encourage you to open your hearts as you sing. You open your mind as you listen to God's word. And speak to God as we pray together. Because he is here for all of us. And as we are prepared to do that, I invite us to be in a standing position if you are able to, so that we take the call to worship together. Holy One. As we this morning to worship you, may we speak truth. So that afterwards we give grace to love to hear. May we pray in faith. 
May we sing with joy. May we listen with open minds, receptive hearts. So that your words may give grace to us Amen. Let's bow our heads together as we pray. What a joyful thing, O oh God, to come before a living God, a God who lives and reigns forever, a God who is willing and waiting for us with outstretched arms to receive us just as we are to refresh us and make us anew in our minds and in our spirit, a God who is ever present in our lives. Dear Lord, we come unto you that please you do not pass us by, that you touch us, O Lord, and help us to have an encounter with you, that this would not just be an exercise that, yes, we have come to church, but our Father, O oh God, we will hear you speak to us, even as we see the faces of our, each other, even as we speak with one another, as we sing, O oh God, praises to you, as we listen to your word read. Take all the glory and honor, because our hearts are here, even as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn found on page 530 in the hymnal, Are Ye Able? <laughs>
You may be seated. The scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Matthew 20, verses 25 through 28. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And just a few comments about this verse. Jesus described leadership from a new perspective. Instead of using people, we are to serve them. And Jesus' mission was to serve others and to give his life away. A real leader has a servant's heart. Servant leaders appreciate others' worth and realize they're, that are, they're not above any job. If you see something that needs to be done, don't wait to be asked. Take the initiative and do it like a faithful servant. Good morning, children. Am I on? I'm on. Okay. Good morning. I think this lesson was kind of hard. It was hard for me. Because when I think of a servant, I think of slavery. Sometimes, and I think of somebody at the restaurant who brings me food. But think that's the kind of serving Jesus was talking about in this verse. At the very first, it says, Jesus called the disciples to himself and said, you know, the Gentiles lord it over them, the rulers lord it over them. What does that mean? If you lord it over someone, you know what that means, Leo? You know what that means? You're not, I'm not Leo. You're not Leo. Oh, sorry. Okay. What does that mean? Well, they, they acted like they were more important, right? And they were better. Do you know people that act that way toward you sometimes? They kind of lord it over you that they know more math than you know, or they know a better song than you know. I don't know. And it goes on to say that they tried to control others. And then what does he say about people? who want to be great. What do they have to do if they want to be great? Remember what it said in the verse? Whoever desires to become great, let him be your servant. So I told him, you can't be great if you're not a servant. Well, that doesn't sound right. Servants were the lowliest people in the system. So... What did he think about people who were always trying to be first? How many of you go out for recess? Do you ever go out for recess? Do you have to get in a line to get back into school? Yeah, and do you like to be first in line? Or do you just like to be first in line when you're going out to recess? So he said, people who are trying to be first, knock it off. Be a servant. Let that other person go in front of you. 
So how was Jesus like a servant? What did he do in his life that you remember that made him like a servant? It says in the last part, the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to be served, and he gave his life. So his one of the ways he served was to give his life. He spent his whole life on earth trying to show people how to be a servant, how to wait on other people, how to help other people. And he gave the ultimate price for it. So what are you going to do this week to be like a servant? Got any ideas? What are some ways you can be a servant? How many of you helped your mom and dad got, get to church today? Were you first in the car, ready to go? Or did you have to sit, they have to say, go brush your teeth, go to the bathroom, come on, let's go, we're going to church, let's go. That's one way you could be a servant. You could give up your priorities to get to church and help your parents. Did everybody get one of those? On one side is a picture of Jesus. What's he doing? Can you tell? He's washing somebody's feet. Wow, I'm glad I don't have to take off my shoes when I come to church and have my feet washed. But that's what they did. When they went in a building, they needed to take the dust off their shoes, and so they washed their feet. So he's being like a servant. So I'm going to give you some colors. And if you have a desire to color this picture during church, take a couple of colors. And on your way out of church today, Kevin will have a basket back there by the camera. See it? And you can drop your colors in there. You can take three or four or five or six. Just grab a handful. We have enough. Let's pray. Good gracious God, I thank you for these children this morning who are going to try to be more servant-like in their week ahead. It's hard to give up what we want and put somebody else first, but that's what Jesus taught us, and that's how we can be a servant. And we can even be a servant here in our church, in our family, anywhere we go. I thank you again for these children. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, get colors and candy, okay? Would you please stand as we sing our next hymn, Yesu, Yesu, found on page 432 in our hymnal. Show us how 
to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Some of us got the, a copy of this book and some haven't. I would strongly recommend you have it. Think, Renita, do you have a few copies with you there? Yeah, there are a few copies back there. And, um, and what did you order them for? for 450? Please get a copy. And um, it's a fun read what is deep as it has to do with what God has called us to do as members of church, uh, the church. So please get a copy of this. I'm going to um, talk about that letter. And I'll, I'll fast forward. At the end of the book, there is a commitment that, you know, we need to reflect on. So at some point after the sermon, I will invite Dave and Greg and maybe others to just pass that so that we look and we probably will read it together. No, maybe not. Just read it. Take time and read and see if you mean what it says. Um, so, okay, these are the housekeeping things that I have. All right. You know... <laughs> Thank you for those who have actually been bearing with my summer jokes. So I'm coming, I'm, I'm actually presenting the last one today. Uh, and then we move to some other things. And one other thing I wanted to say, we still have one Sunday to come to church at 9.30. So the Sunday following Labor Day, we go back to 10.30. So please take note of that um, so that we can be together. So here's the joke today. So as I was preparing to end my summer stories, I read about this one. So Reverend Billy Graham tells of a time early in his ministry when he arrived in a small town to preach a sermon. Wanting to mail a letter, he asked a young boy, where's the way to the post office? When the boy had told him, Dr. Graham thanked him and said, you know, if you will come to the Baptist church this evening, you can hear me telling everyone how to get to heaven, telling everyone the way to heaven. Well, the boy replied, I don't think I will be there. You don't even know the way to the post office. How will I come? Well, I trust you. Okay. Well, I hope somebody trusts that we know the way to heaven so that we can tell them, right? <laughs> okay, so back to the sermon for the day. You know, this story is a very familiar story, and to some of us, probably not. Jesus called his disciples aside. He literally called them to one side and told them that they were on their way to Jerusalem. They were going to Jerusalem where he was going to be betrayed, condemned, mocked, and flogged. And in fact, they would crucify him. 
And on the third day, he was going to raise back to life. He was going to be brought back to life. Well, there, there was a very intelligent and smart woman that had been part of his team. She listened carefully. She, she has been attentive. And her name is not really mentioned by the writer of Matthew, but if you put that passage with its cross-reference in Mark, you're going to understand that that woman's name was Salome. And she was the mother of John and James, the sons of Zebedee, who were two disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, she thought this is an opportunity for me. Well, Jesus is saying that we're coming close to when he has been talking about that he's going to die. And their perception of the kingdom of God was that he was going to go into Jerusalem, die, and then take over the, the, the kingdom from the Romans. So this smart woman came to Jesus and she said, okay, Jesus, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit on your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Simple. That's what I want for you, from you. Well, Jesus responded in verse 22. Okay, I see something happening there. If you read the verse closely, you're going to see as if, okay, maybe if Salome was here and the disciples were here, Jesus probably said, Salome, you don't know what you're asking. Then he turned to the disciples and he said, can you drink the cup? I am going to drink. And you know, this Jesus was talking about the cup of suffering that was awaiting him in Jerusalem. The cup that of, of him being mocked, being, I mean, flogged and all of it. He said, can you drink that cup? Well, they were excited, wanting to secure their position in heaven, maybe not even thinking about it. They said, yes, we can. Sure, we can drink the cup you are going to drink. Well, Jesus affirmed to them that, yes, okay, yeah, I understand. <laughs> you are going to drink that cup. Because if you read the text, it did not say you will be able to, but he told them they will do it. And actually, yes, they did. Because James happened to even be the first that was martyred, was killed as a disciple. And John was, was this disciple that was even taken to the island of Patmos. He was exiled. So they, they, they actually suffered some of these things. You know, Jesus now went further to tell them, well, I know you will be able to drink this, but for me to grant whether you would be on my right or on my left in the kingdom, it is not for me to grant in the Messianic administration. Hmm. Huh. That's weird, but Jesus is God, right? We know this. We know that he has all authority and all power, but here he was. He was saying that it is not for me to grant. It was for the Father to grant this. This is one of the places during the early ministry of Jesus where he showed a remarkable submission to his Father. You know, this brings me to the fact that we are all called to serve. But we can only do so when we follow the example of Jesus Christ. He has called us when he was living. He told the disciples, go and make disciples of all nations. He has sent us and he wants us to be people who serve him and others. He wants us to be the ones that are actually making things to happen, not sitting down to be served. Okay? So, now I want us to take note of three examples from Jesus Christ here if we truly want to serve. Example number one is complete submission. And that was what Jesus did right here. He said, but to sit on my right hand 
and on my left is not mine to give. You know, we talked about last Sunday, we talked about even though, I mean, two Sundays ago, even though he being God, he humbled himself. And this was an example of it. He submitted to God because if you are not submissive to God, the human ego to serve another person is not an easy thing because you would prefer to be served. And sometimes when people serve us, the human ego, instead of appreciating the service, we even criticize. We look for reasons to criticize how they are wrong, how they're not doing it well. You go to a restaurant, maybe you're trying to justify not to give a big tip, okay? You see all the flaws of the waitress, okay? You know, you go to church, sometimes maybe not, being in that place that you want to submit yourself to serve others, you see faults in every area of service so that you can be comfortable not really being part of what God has called you to be. So sometimes if we are not, I mean, this is at all times, if we are not submissive to God, who actually helps us like Jesus to understand that that is what God has called us to do, it will be difficult for us to serve. So complete submission is required if we will serve God. The second thing is a complete different mindset. Okay? A complete different mindset. Now, Jesus put it across to them. He put the rulers of the Gentiles versus the rulers of God's kingdom. They were asking to be rulers in God's kingdom. So he said, okay, here it is. There is a contrast between those who rule the world and those who are actually going to rule in the kingdom of God or those who are even ruling in the kingdom of God. If you look at the verse quickly from verse 25 to verse 28, he gave a complete different mindset. This is what he said. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles dominate them. Isn't that what it is? You know, those who are rulers in the world, they want to claim power. They want to have that power to actually exercise, to command, and to be, re they feel they can earn respect by commanding others. So here they dominate, the rulers of the Gentiles dominate, and the men of high position exercise power over them. It must not be like that amongst you, amongst you. So this is a clear indication. This is how the rulers of the world do it, but it must not. Now, this is saying that we cannot be like the world and still be a picture of Jesus Christ to the world. The picture of service to the world is completely different. So... We have to have a different mindset. This is it. He said, on the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life, a ransom for many. If Jesus had sat down there waiting for the disciples to serve them, waiting for the world to serve them, you and I wouldn't have been saved today. He said, that is, that is not how we do it in the kingdom of God. Life in the kingdom of God is completely different from what the perspective of the world is. Because the idea is to serve. You know, it always interests me. So I don't want to bring politics in this, but I have seen an American president in a less privileged people's home. And he was walking with a team, having these people come, pass by, and he was serving them food. That's not usual. Just like Mary said during the children's time, when we think of service, we think of sitting down and being served. But that is contrary to what God has called us to do. 
So the first thing that we must take as an example from Jesus is a complete submission. The second one is a complete different mindset. And the third one is a complete determination to serve others. You have to be determined. You have to be determined. Jesus, even though he came to serve, the people were plotting to kill him. Go read the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, and see the account. Chapter after chapter, the religious leaders were looking to kill Jesus. They were looking for an opportunity to get him. But Jesus was not self-serving. Despite that, he gave himself to die and be a ransom for you and I and all the world, those that will believe in him. So, my question as I end this message is, what kind of a church member do you want to be? I want you to ask yourself, I want to ask myself, what kind of a church member I am? You know, we have been talking about two kinds of church members. And I'm going to summarize some of the characteristics of this. Do you want to be a JCM? That is a joyous church member. You know, the joyous church member serves others. The joyous church member looks for opportunities to encourage others and to encourage the ministries of the church. The joyous church member participates in small groups. They participate in the church by giving and supporting other ministries in the church. The joyous church member is actively involved. I don't know whether you are a joyous church member or you just come and sit. And that transitions us to the next kind of church member. That is the GCM, the grumpy church member. You know, I don't know which, which one you want to be. Okay? I, I think I prefer to be joyous. Even if, I, I mean, to strive to be joyous, even if I'm not completely there, but to go that direction than to be a grumpy church member. You know? The grumpy church member just sits and complains. The grumpy church member is self-serving because feels like I have contributed my quota. It's now time for somebody else to contribute. They are not self-serving. The grumpy church member has the attitude of, it's either my way or the highway. Okay? If I don't get what I want, I'm going to leave. Or if it is not done in my way, I don't want to be a part of it. You know, the grumpy church member is passively involved in the church. And that will really help us not to guilt trip anybody, but to just help us understand what is my responsibility to God as I belong to the family of Christ. Now the summer is ending and the fall is coming. And we are going to transition and we're going to have a new beginning Sunday on the 11th of September. By the way, Courtney is going to give us an, a nice announcement later on, you know? And we're going to start up afresh with our ministries and a lot of things. And there are so many areas you can be involved in this church. It will soon be time we're beginning to ask people to serve in different ministries of the church. And like we have people, you, you are free. You can look at times that you can serve in the prayer team. Different ministry committees focusing on membership, growth, and nurture, serving in the nursery downstairs. And by the way, we are putting that room live so that you will not even miss the service if you're in the nursery. It's active where you can listen and you can see what is going on even in the sanctuary. Visiting homes of those who are homebound. I, I mean, we used to have ladies in this church that would go to the care facilities almost every month to visit those people and talk to them. Where are they? What happened? People, it never gets better. 
until we are willing to make it better. And God is always there to, to encourage us and to give us a life that he wants us to have. So, as a conclusion to this message, I'm going to have um, Greg, Dave, and Kevin just pass this. And I don't want you to even think of doing anything right now. Pass them. Pass them around. Read it. Take it home. Read it and see, do you want to be a joyous church member, <laughs> whether on Zoom or here in person? Or you just want to sit? Take a copy. Take it home. I don't want it to see it in the trash or in the recycle. I'm going to stand there. If you put it there, I'll say, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is not one copy per family. It's one copy per person. Yeah, just, yeah, just give everybody. And you will get to understand probably how you would do that better. Get a copy of this book, read it, and the Lord will lead us through together. Now, as we do that, I invite some of our young stars that want to serve through singing, I mean, through special music to come forward. Potluck will be starting back on September 11th. Our theme for the month will be potluck favorites. Um, anybody is welcome to come. I will be passing around clipboards, so if you'd like to sign up, please do so. Thank you. But before then, I, some of us know that Janine was part of the leadership team of this ministry, but uh, she moved to Lincoln. And let's welcome Angie to the team to lead the podlog. Please give her a hand of applause and support them with Courtney as they 
lead us uh, to have fellowship through our meals together and spending time with one another. I will invite the ushers to come forward um, for a time that we can serve through our giving. So please, the ushers, will you come forward so that we pray and um, take our offerings together. All right, let's bow our heads together as we pray. Father, we thank you because you have called all of us to serve. And part of the service, oh God, is we give to do things that sometimes we are not even able to get there to do them. So Lord, we pray for your blessings on this offering that will be collected. I pray that, oh God, lives will be blessed. And souls, oh God, will come to you because we've given. You take all the glory, the honor, and adoration as we collect this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. In prayer for Larry Lines, uh, he had a successful surgery and he's been moved back to uh, Box Butte here. Uh, let's pray for him as he heals and continue to pray for people who are struggling with COVID and other ailments as we uh, support them and God will bless all of us together. Please join me as we sing our closing hymn. O oh, Jesus, I have promise, found on page 396, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Unto you, O God, that is able to lead us as we serve. Unto you be glory as we go out to live. Help us as we take our steps to serve our neighbors, to serve the world, to serve those who are in need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. But no, October 1st. 